Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about Stratford International. Ish. But before we do that, if you like what you see, do hit that subscribe button and click the like as it will help us make future videos better. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Eurostar originally started its service in 1994, and this commenced upon completion of the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. And between 1994 and 2007, Eurostar used to use the classic lines, which wound their way all the way through the Kent countryside, through the South London suburbs, and into Waterloo Station. This was in stark contrast to the French offering, which provided access to the LGV Nord, a high speed line which could carry trains direct from the Channel Tunnel straight to Paris, at speeds of up to 190 miles per hour or 300 kilometers per hour. And in 2007, the UK opened its very own version of the LGV Nord, the High Speed One. And this was a brand new line constructed between the Channel Tunnel itself, all the way into London via Stratford, to London St Pancras. And Stratford International Station was also completed at this time, however, it had no services. This was due to a dispute with Eurostar and the UK and French border agencies, who couldn't decide how to run the security. And thus, Stratford International went without the international part. And this issue put a stop to all of the other regional services that were meant to be for the UK, running direct to the continent. Stratford International was supposed to serve as some sort of interchange. It was hoped that before 2012, before the London Olympics, that all sides would be able to come up for a plan to stop services in Stratford, but this never materialised. Instead, what we were given, and also made part of the final bid for the Olympics, was the procurement of the Class 395 Javelin services. These services form a regional link between the outer parts of Kent into East and Central London, stopping at both Stratford International and St Pancras, also with an interchange at Ebbsfleet. And these services are scheduled to run up to 140 miles per hour on the high speed line, with their deficit to the Euro services in high speed made up for with their very strong acceleration. Looking back on the Eurostar services, a brand new depot was constructed for them just to the north of Stratford International, with access facilitated by a spur off the track which runs above the platforms and curves off into the tunnel towards the northeast. And this depot project was completed by the government at a cost of £400 million. This new depot in Orient Way was designed to replace the old depot in White City. In 2011, ready again for the London Olympics, Stratford International received an extension of the Docklands Light Railway. This extension covered what used to be most of the old North London line down to Woolwich, and used the same track bed between Canning Town and Stratford International. But perhaps there's a future video in that one, so keep an eye out on this channel in the future. This was also part of a lengthening process for the DLR trains. As you can see on the screen now, they are three carriages each. Each carriage is articulated in the centre. The Docklands Light Railway was always a bit of a victim of its own success. You can see the train is now starting to enter the Docklands Light Railway platform, and this is situated adjacent to Stratford International's platform's ticket office hall, which you can see coming into the shot on the right now. And here are some shots of that end of the booking hall. As you can see it is relatively quiet and quite oversized really. This is because they were expecting to have international services and required the space for security, which never happened. And here's a view from within the booking hall. As you can see there are actually three ticket machines, there's one hidden around the corner there and one booking office window. For a supposed international station, the facilities are quite small. And again, this is because the international services did never materialise. And as we can see above in this shot, there are a range of destinations, 
available to the local and regional javelin services between London St Pancras, Margate, Ramsgate, Dover Priory and so on and so forth. Passenger numbers remain so small that all is required are four ticket gates. International services have never taken off from Stratford International and they probably never will. The clue is in the words take off. Since the mid-1990s up until the present day, airfares have been quite cheap and getting cheaper and cheaper, especially in comparison to Eurostar services. And the main reason for it is what's in front of you now. It's the infrastructure. There's a lot more infrastructure for a railway line to maintain compared to an airline. An airline company may pay to use an airport and that fee is shared between many airlines. And in between the destinations, there's no infrastructure at all. Whereas on the Eurostar services, the infrastructure starts on a grand scale on one end, is grand all the way through, and finishes in a grand scale at the other. And the costs of its upkeep are only split between a handful of companies. So your ticket price has to cover that to make it a viable option. On the other hand, with the world moving towards a greener policy, the future does bode well for Eurostar and other international services. The recent merger of Tylus and Eurostar could see more international destinations added, along with some competition who are also looking to secure slots on the line, mainly at the moment the European Sleeper Service, which we'll be keeping a close eye on in the future. But that's it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, do hit that subscribe button and do click the like as it will help us make future videos better. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to leave you now with a few nice shots from above. Take care and goodbye.